Good afternoon and welcome to County Connection. I'm your host, uh, Supervisor Darrell Seymour, District 4. And today I have Chris Pasteurs, who's with us today, uh, Economic Development Director, Navajo County, also Real AZ uh, Coordinator for Eastern Arizona. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Supervisor. Great to have you with us today. Chris, uh, being an economic director, we're gonna get into that uh, a little bit, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your background how long you've been with the county and what made you come to Navajo County? Sure, I'd love to. So I, I've been doing economic development in Northern Arizona for about four and a half years now. Uh, so prior to this, I, I, I came to Navajo County about 10 months ago uh, from Coconino County. And uh, one of the things that, that actually attracted me and my family, I've got a wife and, and, and two children, was the traditional, more conservative, community focused, towns. And so one of the things that uh, that we, we had been working on is going, okay, we need to be in a place where we can raise our family. We've got a future. We've got the schools, the sports, all of those um, components for the community. But really, when, when the, the opportunity came up for the economic development director role here in Navajo County, it wasn't until I had actually uh, been working with the um, the, the prior incumbent, uh, Rochelle Acapa, in Preston Rayban in, in Apache and um, and Navajo County on a regional coal community transition plan. So in, in, in the context of the, the three counties in Northern Arizona, we've got four power plants that are coal fired generating stations. Uh, one's closed, the other one's gonna close in six months, and then we've got another two slated to close in about seven years. And so as a, a three county group, we decided to, uh, to get in front of this and, and come up with an economic diversification plan for the region. And so it was that introduction that I had with the, uh, my, my cohort in, uh, in Navajo County and Apache County that kind of opened my eyes to what can economic development look like uh, in, in, in Northern Arizona in, in smaller communities that more align with uh, my family's values and in the future that we'd like to see. Is that way? Yeah, I think it was interesting. Uh, one of the positions of Navajo County when I came on as supervisor, as well as with the city or town, you're always trying to look out for economic growth. So it isn't that we are going out as a community or as a city or town or county, we can't go out and build something and say, okay, uh, we need a new gas station, we need a new hotel. Those aren't done. All we can do is level the playing ground, make it appealing and attractive for different businesses and different people to come in. And one of the things that we found is that if we have an economic development director who's coordinating with cities and towns, and maybe the fit isn't for Sholo, maybe it's for Pine Top, maybe it's for Holbrook, maybe it's for Snowflake, what person can interrelate with those other communities and help find the best fit for somebody who's maybe looking to start a business, grow a business, or bring industry into the community. And so there's been a great need. We've had Real AZ and I can tell you, you know, straight up and you and I've had very hard conversations and very frank conversations about it. But what you have done for Real AZ in the short 10 months, we're starting to see fruits from your labor. And I think that is always important. If we have somebody in a position, are we seeing something beneficial come from it? And so I appreciate the work that you've done and things that you have going forward with us. Uh, but other than, you know, you have, what stages are your children? So I, I've got two daughters okay. and they're, uh, they're 10 and 11 right now. All right. So you're right there in the prime of uh, making sure they have good schools, good community, and they are going to have a place to come back to uh, when they leave home and things. So that, that's very crucial there. You know, tell us your role, though, of what, how involved you are with other cities and towns how a project that maybe you want to share or what you can share about anything that's really happening, transitioning, uh, coming to our area or potentially. Yeah, thank you, uh, Supervisor. So I think when, just to follow up on the point that you made, we 
the best we can do is market ourselves and, and uh, show what our communities have to offer, how strong our workforce is, what our workforce training programs look like, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of uh, land, what kind of numbers, population, um, all of those, uh, those demographic information is often what drives business decisions. So they'll look at it and they'll say, yes, we like we believe as a, as a business that we can uh, create jobs and, uh, and make money operating in a, a community or a region that looks like this. And so I think it, 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 as Real AZ is, is situated, our, our members are Apache County, Navajo County, and then all of the municipalities within. And so what it, what it means is for, for, the, for the Real AZ members is when a, a company comes in and says, hey, Chris, we would love to uh, look at uh, building a motor cross event center, a racetrack center. They say, we like where, where you're located in Northern Arizona. Um, where would be a copacetic place to, uh, to do this type of development? And uh, so, and, and I use this because this is a real example that we're seeing here mm -hmm. now. And uh, so these guys were originally looking at developing way out, it, away from everything. Um, and, and so with the motorbike racing parks there, uh, there's usually a, a, a large event, 300 you know, racers come for the weekends, they stay for a couple days, they're racing with the kids, the families, and uh, they, they need places to stay, right? They need places to eat, they need places to drink, they need places to fuel up. And so uh, what we're able to do with this, uh, this company is uh, find the right spot in Holbrook, in the city of Holbrook. So they're looking at ways of, of revitalizing and, uh, and growing their, uh, their, their industry, their tourism industry, with this event center. So it, it made for a nice fit, right? The land was, uh, was at the right price range. The, uh, the, the council, the community was into this. They want to see an influx of people coming and not just passing through, but staying. Stay. And so as a, as a member of Real AZ, we were able to make sure that the, uh, the, this developer was linked up with the, uh, with the city of Holbrook, right? And so, so that is uh, one of the ways in which we've, uh, we've worked through our membership to make sure that there's a good fit between what the community wants and what the business is looking to do. Um, so, so I've got a few other examples as well, but uh, that, that's just kind of one to, to get started about. That, that's fantastic, you know, being able to coordinate all of that and work with the different, you know, municipalities to make that happen. What are some of the priorities that you focus on? You know, a lot of it you've shared here is data. And I think really years ago we used to say, well, this area is great because in a 50 mile radius we have 150 that swells to 200,000 in the summer. You know, you can't, you can possibly, you've drilled that down and, and provided a lot more data as to workforce, labor force, all of those education, housing, all those things that you now have more data and I think that's been very helpful. It, it, it has been, uh, th that data is one of our, our priorities. So the, the members of Real AZ uh, came together several years ago. They, they've been working together for the last 15 years. But a couple years ago, they said, all right, we want to really focus on three priorities. And they're, they're kind of grouped into three buckets. So the first priority is really about industry attraction. It involves coal community transition and also job creation or workforce development. So that's priority one, right? So that's, that, that's where the, the core of the work that I do is, is focused on. The second priority looks at, at the data, our marketing of our region, as well as workforce housing. And then we've got a third um, priority that it looks at broadband. So those are kind of the, the, the areas of focus, if you will. And uh, so I think when, when, when I'm working on economic development uh, projects and working with our partners, if it fits into one of those priorities, that's something that, that my board has said, yes, go after it. But if it's sitting off into the fringe and it doesn't align with those priorities set forth, well, that's, uh, that's, that, that's probably best to uh, team them up with someone else um, who, who, who's looking after those areas. So, I, Who are some of the members of Real AZ? So uh, some of our members, uh, so we've actually got three different types of tiers of members. So we've got local governments, as I mentioned, the, uh, the Apache, uh, Navajo counties, as well as the municipalities within. We've also got a, um, a, a section of members that are uh, for-profit 
businesses. So the larger businesses in the region who are, who are really engaged with that workforce training component are members of Real AZ. Uh, and then we've got a smaller lot of, uh, of businesses uh, that, are, that are members. And those are the guys that are, are, that are working in to, uh, to build their business to make sure that their, their work is uh, supplementing the, uh, the projects that are happening in the region, right? And then our, our third set of members is, is the nonprofits, right? So we've got a, uh, a few nonprofits that are uh, in the region that are focused on business development, as well as uh, academic institutions. So Northland Pioneer College is one of our long-term members. We've, uh, we've got um, NAU is a member. We've got ASU is a member. So within this group, we've got industry, we've got true sayers or the academic institution, as well well as the uh, the community leaders at the uh, at the local jurisdictional levels. That's great. So it involves a lot of people, a lot of working parts. Uh, it's like with anything, you get something going. It doesn't happen real quickly, but having a coordinator and and that's kind of what you do is you coordinate a lot of those efforts uh, going forward. How have you found working with other communities, other cities? Uh, I think as a whole, it seems that most of them are on board with. Uh, growth and they want growth but yet most of these projects that come will feel a little pushback too and, and i think if, if you're not feeling those growing pains you're not growing and if you're not growing we all know what the alternative is right. and so uh, i i think feeling those growing pains is a healthy um feeling for a lot of these communities but what we're seeing with the communities and this this particularly excites me is these communities are now actively engaged in the industry planning phase so they're they're, they're planning for smart growth because they know they're going to grow one way or the other but they want to grow in a way that creates, you know, sustainable jobs. They want to grow in a way that, you know, supports the schools and the, and the community values. And so in, in doing that, they uh, have uh, been applying for, uh, for federal grants and regional grants. Is, and, and Real AZ has been part of those movements to plan for that smart growth in these communities. And uh, th that's been a, 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 a neat part that the, uh, the local jurisdictions, the local communities have been doing to um, alleviate or, or kind of uh, um, ease some of those growing pains because they're saying, this is the industries that we're looking at. This is what we need for those industries. This is the workforce training that we need. Okay, these are the partners that we need. So they're starting to build that, um, that ecosystem that suits their temperament or their appetite. I know you guys were successful in helping and, and get a Brownsville grant. And people don't know what that is. Is sometimes you have a, a situation where maybe you had a, an old tanker or you had some something that contaminated the soils, and it's very costly to get that back to the standard where EPA will allow you to build another building on. And I think you got a grant of somewhere around 1.2 million dollars or so was awarded. And how does that help uh, economically, uh, some of those things? I mean, it's obvious, but let's explain that a little bit. Sure, so, uh, so the Brownfields grants, right? It, it, it's really important to say, first off, these are not enforcement grants. What they are is they're, they're grants for assessment. So the, you're right, there may be a, a suspect property. Um, I, I like to think of them as stigmatized properties where there might be something wrong with the uh, maybe a asbestos or lead paint or something under the ground. But in order to redevelop those properties, those um, stigmatized properties need to be assessed. And those assessments can run anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000 and the property owner is often left to, to, to pay for those assessments in order to then right. develop or redevelop that property. But this Brownfields grant that we've got, and it's available to all of Navajo County. So all of the municipalities, all of the tribal regions, all of the unincorporated. So this is the first time that Navajo County has had uh, broad access to this, uh, these Brownfield grants. And so what they are is they pay for the, ass the assessment. And remember, this is a non-enforceable so really it's saying, okay, this property either does or doesn't have these issues. If there are issues identified, well then there's pathways that we can work through for, for remediation. But those assessments need, need to be done before banks will loan money to have those sites redeveloped. And oftentimes we see that as uh, old gas stations, you know, right on right. The, the prime land. Yeah. And there's nothing happening there. Well, there's probably a reason 
And this assessment grant or these brownfield grants will help to understand what is, is there actually an issue? If so, what, what, what can we do as far as a plan without burdening the uh, property owner with paying for those assessments? That's great. That's very helpful uh, for growth in, in prime areas. We're getting close on time here, but tell me if a local company wanted to get involved, how they would go about getting involved and like how often do you guys meet and, and assess things? So um, in, in terms of uh, involvement from local companies, the, uh, the Real AZ membership, uh, we meet six times a year and it's an in-person uh, meeting and uh, we've got presentations from, uh, from different uh, groups, uh, whether they be members or state or federal entities. Um, but they, there is a, uh, it, we've got a tiered system for the annual dues, right? And so part of that is not only do you uh, get the, uh, the access to all the uh, community leaders, right, um, that, that are the members, but you also get access to the tools that we've got available. So all the data, we've got site selection tools. We do a lot of active promotion of sites. We do a lot of uh, active promotion of, uh, of industry. And so you get access to those tools as, as becoming a member. But really the first step to, uh, to to, to checking this out is, is talk with one of our members, right? And say, hey, how do you find value out of this? What is it that, uh, that, that keeps you returning year after year after year? And, uh, and, and once you've, you've kind of got that word of mouth, uh, then the next step is they can always call me or go check out our website. You know, it's, it's realaz.org. Uh, there's, there's a lot of information that's out there, uh, but I'm also happy to take phone calls too. From you know, from those that are are uh, looking. So we we've actually had in the last uh, several months we've had uh, six new uh, business members that have joined us, right? Because they're going, hey, we want to be part of this development, part of this smart growth, part of this planning. We want to be in that room with those community leaders to make sure that we're serving um, not only our business needs but the needs of the communities. Yeah. You know, and it's neat how it works in the whole partnership of. You know, there's a project that wants to come. Maybe there isn't ordinances that allow for it. Maybe there's some tweaking of some ordinances or, or maybe on the comprehensive plan that needs to be adjusted to allow a big manufacturer or a big pr uh, project to come. And that's where cities and county organizations can start working hand in hand to make our whole area more viable for growth. And I really feel that as we push growth and as we push smart growth, good growth, this big because we are losing some of our major players, some of our major tax base that affects education, it affects schools, it affects uh, jobs. And that's why we support this as much as we can from the county level, from the local level of cities and towns, why they're all on board. And it's just fantastic to see that we have one of the best areas in Arizona it's becoming more and more recognized. We're doing a better job at marketing it. We're being a better job at getting it out there so people are aware of what we do have. And as more and more people come with our broadband availability that we'll have soon that will be improved in this area, we have some of the greatest natural resources that is here and the distribution lines from power lines and things. It just makes this a great place. We had logging, we had industry, we had more tourism, we, we had those things, but life changes and directions change. You still can't get from Phoenix to Shello in an EV and back, very simple. So we still love the gas powered, but we have to look at how that's evolving and how that comes into step with it. So Chris, you've done a great job and just great to have you today to be able to share some of your insights. Anything else you'd like to wrap up and, and say in closing here? Yeah, I think I, 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 I'd love to, uh, to I, I always love to brag that our, our, our dirt is redder, our juniper is greener. <laughs> but our people are better. And really when it comes down to, uh, to industry that's looking at this region, it does come down to the people. It comes down to what their, what their work ethics are, what their training are, and also their care for their community. And that is what makes businesses successful is the people. And so we're gonna continue to have inquiries and industry coming here to look at us. But really it, it, it's about making sure that we've got a right fit but we don't want those opportunities to be missed out on one region that might have a good fit. And that's why this Real AZ group is so powerful and effective because those opportunities are, are uh, viewed by all of our members to make sure there is a fit. You know, coming out and looking at it, we just celebrated the 4th of July. We have more people up here 
at rodeos, at, at events, at parades than we ever have. And so it's just a tribute to what's happening to our economy and in the area. People are enjoying what we've enjoyed for a long time. They're finding out. So this, the cat's out of the bag, uh, the secret's out, and we appreciate that. But it's part of what we need to, to continue growth and continue having families that grew up here be able to stay here and just like yourself to have your children grow up here and stay here and find jobs when the time comes. Thanks so much Chris and appreciate what you're doing.